Hi, this is Evelyn Armina from Marble Waves, and I'm here to talk with the Enrons about your new favorite song, Through the Dark. Passing trails, drink out of Hello and welcome to Your New Favourite Song, a podcast brought to you by the Enrons, where each week we will feature a recently released song from an independent artist. My name is Bernard Dennis and I will be your host. Today I'll be speaking to Avelina Armina of Marble Waves about their song Through the Dark from their just released eponymous EP, Marble Waves. Hello, Avelina. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. You're mm. Welcome. Thank you for coming along. So before the interview, I send the guests a list of questions, which they can select three for me to ask them at the beginning of the show in order to get to know them better. So here is the first question to Evelina. What would your superpower be and why? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sound so nerdy, but I would love to be able to talk to animals. <laughs> <laughs> That's like my dream. Uh, That's my biggest yeah. dream. I would, I would really- love that. Yeah. Did you want to be a vet when you were small? I did, actually. Yes. Um, did but that dream come true? No. I, I, it turned out you needed to be really good in math and biology and science and all of that. And I, apparently my mind is more creative. I'm not, I'm not good with that. So, yeah. I had to let that go. So, you had to let that go. <laughs> yeah. And I could just sing to them instead rather than talk to them. That's what I do now. I have two cats and they are my biggest fans. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. And your cats are called? Mm. Uh, shout out to your cats. Gato and Gaudi, my babies. Gato and Gaudi. Yeah, Gato and Gaudi. So, I mean, now we're talking, you said nerdy. Um, it seems like you've got a nerdy piece of trivia. So what is your nerdiest piece of trivia? I am really proud of this. I watched Breaking Bad, the whole thing, five seasons, yeah. in nine days. Whoa. <laughs> I just did, did, I just kept going. <laughs> did, did you not eat or sleep or whatever? I is? didn't. I don't know what how I don't know how. I just spent like my whole holidays on that series and then the actually the the most amazing thing about it is that i finished it and then i felt like my whole life was over and i watched it again um, ah so another nine days well i took a little longer maybe like 14 or something i don't know <laughs> but yeah i was a big fan i'm a big 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 fan so we, I think we that, didn't skip anything the no. second time around no 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 actually i watched it again after that i watched again. it three times <laughs> Yeah, so I found that pretty nerdy. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's uh, uh, well, I've read like Lord of the Rings. I think every year since I was at university. Oh, so amazing. I think I've read it like thirty times or something. Oh my, that's amazing! <laughs> Isn't that just so, amazing? If you're if you're such an enthusiast about something, yeah. Just... Uh, and every time it's just you know you get back into. The characters you love and the bits that make you, that really touch you, touch you every single time. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. So we're going to move along to your uh, guilty pleasures. Which song is your guilty pleasure? I Want It That Way by the Backstreet Boys. I want it that way. Yeah. But, by but the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> the Backstreet Boys? Are you even old enough? <laughs> yes, man. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I I'm I might be a little bit too young, but I went to a concert of them. I think last year or maybe two years ago. I don't know. Time is weird right now, but they they came to Amsterdam. I live in Amsterdam, and they came. Like I think two years ago now, and they're like pretty old right now. But I yeah. was like, oh my god, I have to go. I I I have to go. So I went, and I think I was like literally the youngest person there, and I think there were like more pregnant women than men. So the whole experience was just amazing, and um, I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Backstreet Boys, God, I mean, well, that's 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 really yeah. Going back it, I mean, it, it will not fit with the music that I make. You will be so confused when you hear my song now. You're like, what? But yeah, I love it. 
Yeah, but I mean, just because you... Okay, we're going to move on to a nice bridge to the song, <clears throat> uh, Through the Dark, which is uh, Americana type of sounding yes. uh, song, which is this very uh, singer-songwriter, Americana folk. Yeah. How, how would you describe it? Uh, I think like you just did, Americana folk. Yeah, it's perfect, I think. Yeah. You wouldn't say country, though. Maybe. I think it's also... You know, but like like Americana is of course like a like a modern kind of country. I think. It, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would also a lot of people. It was like the first single that we released. It was our de debut single, and mm -hmm. um, actually our style in general is like more like folk. We make folk, indie folk, dream pop, Americana kind of music, but mm -hmm. like. Then that was the first one, and a lot of people were like, oh, a country band, yes, here we go, a country. And we we're like, oh, um, the rest is not country. <laughs> so we we're like, mm, we didn't think about this, but uh, yeah. yeah, but we really love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a really, it's a really great song, and uh, your voice and the whole, the whole sound of the song reminds me of the kind of very early Ilse de Lange. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. For people who not don't live in the Netherlands, she's if you live in America, you'll probably know he's like Ilse de Lange. She's quite the most famous country singer in the, the Netherlands has produced. Yes. And I think she's, she's also amazing. in the Common Limit, which is the yeah. Eurovision Song Contest uh, finalist. So she's a really big singer. But she, I think she kind of introduced country again back into the Netherlands. Yeah, about, I think so, yeah. About 20 years ago. Uh, how many of you are in the, in the band? We are with four. So what's the lineup? So we have me as a lead singer, and then mm -hmm. we have Frank Geerlings is a guitar player, and he plays mandolin as well. And then we have Amé Staal on the bass, and she's also mm -hmm. a backup singer, and or, or like backing vocalist. And we mm -hmm. have Rutger Lauwersen on the drums, and he's also a backing vocalist. Okay, so you've got quite a few voices in there as well. Yeah, we, we sing with the three of us, and Frank is mm -hmm. starting to... to learn <laughs> singing as well so that's our that's our goal like we want to sing with the four of us and uh but yeah we sing with the three of us and that's also very important for our music and really what we we really want to have those harmonies in there also in our live mm -hmm. shows not just like on the on the records but also in the live shows so um so yeah, that's really cool yeah so do you sing the whole melody in three-part harmony or just parts it depends a bit like um uh, most of the songs are i'm really the lead vocal and we have like parts where we do where we sing with all of us mm. and we have a lot of parts where it's me and Amé with like the two of us um mm. but then we also like have uh one song the last song on our ep is that we just released is called stay with me and we like we are also very inspired by small bands like the staves but also bands like uh, crosby stills and nash where it's all about mm -hmm. like the harmonies and we wanted to have one kind of tribute in there or like one thing where we show like that is what we do as well and what we love as well so we we ended the ep with a song that is just only one guitar and mm -hmm. three voices and that's it so it and the whole song well like it has like a little intro of just me and then um, after that little intro, it's like a whole song with just the three of us harmonizing. And um, so it depends. Like we have some songs that are more like me with backing vocals and we yeah. have some songs that are really about the harmonies. Yeah. Okay. And, and where would you put to, Through the Dark I in think, that spectrum? I think Through the Dark is, is pretty close to like, well, it's like somewhere in between the middle and like a lot of harmonies because actually yeah. on the record it has a lot of harmonies because we have like the we have like a sort of um how do you call it in english like a chord in dutch like we have like the la, 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 yeah, la, yeah. La, la, which is like like a like a thing and then we also have harmonies in just like the verses and the, the, the choruses and stuff so it's like um and also when we do it live we sing pretty much the whole song with together with two and then in the chorus with her join so yeah that's pretty much about the harmonies i guess yeah <laughs> it made the hair stand on the back of my neck you, oh, know, thank you. Point when, <laughs> you know when you're listening and that that you get that from close harmony 
that's yeah. really well sung uh, you know, as well. So that's a really nice part of this song. And so what is the song about or what are the influences of this song? Um, well, when I wrote it, this was actually one of the first songs we wrote. And it was, um, it started with me and Frank. And I, I think this was in 2017, actually. It was like a while back. And I was really in like this phase um, where I felt like I was a bit stuck in my life and I wanted to do stuff and I was working really hard, but I wasn't reaching my goals. Like I felt like I was stuck and um, I didn't really know if I was walking the right path and like if I was going in the right direction. And this was really bothering me a lot. And so yeah. a lot of the songs that we wrote in that period um, are about this about this feeling and some are more in like a positive way like extraordinary is also about this but it's like more in a positive way and this actually the song is really happy through the dark like if you listen mm -hmm. to it it's just catchy and it's like la 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 but actually yeah. the lyrics are like about me trying to find the right place in life and that's also what's like through the dark i'll be back home it's like you know you have to go to the bad places to hopefully find where you belong that's that's sort of what it's about <laughs> so um yeah and well and musically like i am the biggest fan of first aid kit it's like um, it's a swedish band and it's amazing and this song was pretty much inspired by them i guess like a lot of people who listen to it also said um that they really like they said it like I didn't tell them, but they were like, "This reminds me of First Aid Kit," which was like, "Yes." <laughs> we didn't try to we didn't try to copy them, not at all. But I, like now that I listen to it, I can like I I understand what people mean by it. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I was yeah. definitely inspired by them, but not intentionally. But now I hear that I was really inspired by them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Amateurs borrow and professional steal. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't do it on you know, purpose. But like now, no, but now it's, it's like you've taken something of theirs and made it your own. Yeah, it's, just, it's not like you've just said this is this is theirs and I'm going to use it. No, it's you've taken it from them and you've done it. I you've made it your own. In, inspired it. by them, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And so um, you made this song. Um, you wrote this song. Or yourself, or did you write it as a band? Well, we wrote this pretty much together, I guess. Um, well, we wrote this when we wrote this. This was in two thousand, I think, two thousand seventeen or eighteen. It was like in the beginning because I met Frank, the, the guitar player, in two thousand seventeen, and we really clicked musically. And we decided, like, we really wanted to write songs together because we really had the same style and the same. I don't know, we, we wanted to try the same things. And then we also met another singer, another girl, uh, Laila Mol. And she, uh, with her together, the three of us, we started writing songs. Just like, can we do this? Yeah, like, what will happen if we start writing songs? And a lot of good things came from that. And one of them was Through the Dark. But it was a completely different version back then. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was pretty much the basics. And then, uh, like, time... We, time passed and we kept playing it and changing it and uh, Lila left the band and we got the other band members and like a lot of stuff happened and it just kept evolving and evolving and then in the end this is what happened so I guess this is really like a work that we all really contributed to but mm -hmm. I think the basic was really me and Frank like uh, a while back we we wrote the melody and the, the chords and then slowly it it became what it is now. Can you go through a little bit about the, let's say, the chord progression and how the song evolves or you, what's the story that it takes you through in this song? Oh, that's a good one. Well, I guess now it's just, it, it's just pretty happy overall. And it starts like with, with a fresh guitar that's immediately get catchy and like um, vocals that are immediately, I guess, bright and nice and then the harmonies come in and um they just get deeper and deeper like the, the, mm -hmm. the, the more voices are added as the song progresses and like also more um instruments are added as we go further into the song so like at one point there's a piano and then there's like a mandolin added and an extra guitar and um so it builds up and it's also it builds up 
also with a tambourine, by the way. So like, um, yeah, it, it just builds up until the end and it, then it's like just really happy explosion of a lot of harmonies, I guess. Um, but like when we wrote it, 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 it known, it's known some different versions and we also had one where it, where it was more like dreamy and I guess more dark than now mm-hmm. and really slow without the la 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 it was more than yeah. without that and like a little bit more slow with we had like also we had an electric guitar like when we mm-hmm. when we first wrote it and then it, i guess it was it was pretty dramatic so it's funny what you can do with yeah. this with this song <laughs> yeah and the name also lends itself to different types of through the dark could also be really quite a depressing or down or a uh, difficult song or yeah. you know which would fit the title or you know you're kind of going through a tunnel and you're coming out to the light at the end of the tunnel you know exactly. so you've got to go through the dark to get to the light yeah when you wrote the lyrics did you decide that that was going to be the story yeah well um I wrote the lyrics as well, the first version of the lyrics as well, together with this other girl. And we were really going through the same uh, phase in life. Like we, we really connected on like the feeling of not belonging or wanting something that you that, that's just not happening or something. And we talked about this a lot. And we also, we, we both are really dreamy. So we also had like a lot of... Um, uh, built out how do you say that in english like we we visualize it a lot so that's what like the first part is about like passing trails train cut off rails metaphors. lights yeah it's just like <laughs> metaphors of like how we felt <laughs> and then <laughs> and then the and then the song progresses a little bit and i i wanted the second verse to be a little bit more to the point like you can really understand what it's about so i'm like yeah. everything is always moving but everything is moving nowhere and it makes me want to get away really far away that was just like uh, like now they should get what it's about and um yeah yeah because what i'm thinking is when you what we were talking about just a moment ago is if you make the lyrics that kind of maybe tells a story and then you have to find music that fits with that to tell that story yeah you know if you've got a nice happy song and you put dark d minor kind of chords into there and you know make it all heavy and organs and weird you know then it doesn't fit with the message of your song exactly because now the, the message of the song actually is also a positive one like that's what the chorus chorus is about it's like through the dark I'll be back home and then the, at the end we're like home, home. so it's like it's like you know, we d- we didn't want it to be like too much, like um, too much drama, but like yeah. more like yeah. yeah, this is what I've what I've gone through, and or like gone through that makes it pretty dramatic still. But like this is this is what I've struggled with, and at the end, mm-hmm. I went through the dark and I'm home. Like I found my home, or or you can also think of it like you will find your home or it's the road or you know the road yeah, is what's yeah, important yeah, yeah. i don't know you can yeah. you can get from it what you want and we have a lot of songs about this and some are more dramatic and some are more hopeful and i guess this is somewhere in between mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's quite understandable it's like uh, your journey through the dark yeah you know and yeah the nice thing about this is you kind of musically take people on the journey that you want them to take yeah because you it's a happy journey yeah, you know you've yeah. had trials and tribulations but in the end it's all okay exactly and the music reflects that the way, the way that you've composed it yeah Did you also record or how did that go the recording and yeah we the whole EP, not just this song well yeah we recorded the whole ep in february this year february of 2020 so just mm-hmm. before like the corona shut COVID. down our, yeah. our our country yeah we, we were right on time um <laughs> and um yeah well i mean 
we've been working at this for like to to finally have an EP for I think two years now. So um, and that was really the goal, and and then the, the next goal is an album. So um, mm-hmm. so I guess like well, a year ago we started to really make demos so we made demos yeah. of like a lot of our songs more than what's on the ep actually and um as we were working on that we we figured out like what the first ep should be and which of the songs should be on the ep and then we recorded them again but like really like good demos um yeah. home we uh, frank has um as like a pretty nice studio in his home like it's like a home studio so it's not really mm-hmm. professional but good enough to have good demos and then yeah then we went to uh to a real studio um um with a producer and um we uh, tom sickers larger than life studios in tilburg yeah, yeah. and um yeah and that was really nice and we were there for like a week i guess in the studio and we recorded everything you hear is uh, real instruments, so we didn't use uh, computers or whatever. Everything is real. So even the French horn is a real French horn in uh, Extraordinary, <laughs> and the violins are real, and uh, the, yeah, everything is uh, real. So did you hire session musicians to do those? Yes. Yeah, we did. Well, we I, we have some friends, of course, and we also we had like we the violin player we know. We we've done some uh, some. St- we wrote with her a little bit and um that was really nice she really fits like our music so we really wanted to have her on mm-hmm. there and um we know uh the, the the cello player is like a friend of drummer and like we, yeah we, and uh, the horn player is a friend of mine so we um yeah we we we've, we've sort of collected some uh collected. some good friendships <laughs> <laughs> i'm hung yeah <laughs> exactly yeah 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 smart smart yeah. friends <laughs> smart friends yeah it's not what you know huh? it's who you know i don't know i was i was just like uh i was and and we were recording but i was i was like mm-hmm. the manager i guess like i had like this whole list of every song what needed to be done which instruments and which parts and what we needed and like an excel sheet i guess so mm-hmm. i was just like uh you know, like writing, uh, writing, 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 like we didn't do this yet. We didn't do this. Yet. Oh, go, go, go. we have to do this. Okay. We, we're still on time. We're, we're okay, guys. So I was just like so hyper focused that, that I don't know, the time just went by and it was just so amazing. It, it, it was so fun to do. It was amazing. Yeah. And in the end, did you, you know, does it really match up to your original idea? I think that's what. Oh my, it's so much better than I hoped. Like Tom Tickers did such a good job. I'm so happy with him as a producer because like uh, it's just it's so dreamy and like kind of some of the songs are really cinematic, which is really thanks to him as well. He really understood what we wanted to to convey with the music. And like we, of course, we recorded and composed it. So, you know, yeah. it, it's, it's of, of course, we know what we want. But then the producing is so so important, and the mixing and the mastering. So I'm, oh, I'm so happy with the result. Yeah, yeah, yes. Oh, I'm really, really proud. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I'm really like a perfectionist. So yeah. of course, already I, with every song, I'm, I'm like, oh, we should have done this. Oh, we should have added yeah. that. Oh, yeah, yeah, this could yeah. have been better. So, but, but I mean, that will never go away. But yeah, That's... overall, I'm just so happy with the result. Yeah, yeah. and. and also not just we're happy with the result but do you think it tells the story that you wanted to tell that's, yes that's another thing yeah yes i think so i think okay. also like the because we also with the ep we wanted to show all our different sides i guess like be, mm-hmm. because we have this a debut single was like pretty happy folky americana song but then mm-hmm. the next one we intentionally made it a little deeper more dreamy like uh mm-hmm. Um, that was extraordinary. So we we're like, that's already pretty uh, different. And then we also have like a little bit more of a dark kind of side, which was called the current, and also more cinematic. And then we thought with the rest of the EP, well, we also really want to show this this uh, acoustic side that we can just play with one guitar and just sing, and also have a song, you know, like more the Crosby, Stills and Nash kind of vibe. So yeah. we have, and then Moon and Mars is really spacey and more like has even broke rock kind of 
yeah, element yeah, yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah, so yeah, we were yeah, like, yeah. we we want we want to show all the elements of that of our music because we're not just one trick, and it's not like we want to be weird or we don't have a style, but we have we just have different sides, and then the whole the style is that it's the marble wave sound. So the sound of the of the marble wave music was really important that we you know that we record it right and we mix it right because it has to be like it's really important and i'm i'm really happy with how how that turned out like it's it's bright and it's 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 i don't know it sounds a bit it's still acoustic but it's also Mm -hmm. but it's also really dreamy and yeah um floaty and and i don't yeah it's just really what i wanted so yeah <laughs> yeah ethereal i think is the word you're ethereal looking for. yeah that's what people say that's that's that that's what everyone describes it and i think that's yeah. that's that's the yeah. right word ethereal uh, yeah. it's quite a distinctive sound and i mean the, the ep is uh, as you said it's not all just singer songwriter americana three part three part harmony and la 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 there are quite yeah. different sides to the the palette exactly I yeah think. yeah but they're quite dis- distinctively the same artist yeah exactly Which yeah i think is a cool trick yeah yeah i'm really proud of that we worked on that really hard as well like in the demos we already uh we've really figured out like okay what 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 does it what what is it that makes it dreamy or ethereal and what is it that makes it go from "Ah, that's okay to like a deeper thing and and sometimes it's something that's really easy but then when you edit it's like it brings a little magic to your song and it's like just a really simple thing that suddenly makes it marble waves, I guess. Uh, yeah, something that we. Oh, uh, that's the, the secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like there's like um, little tricks that we that we figured out that really that really work. So uh, that's cool to, to figure out. But we're, I mean, we're uh, also just. Uh, what are they? Uh, trade secrets. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that we that we that we really figured out is that if you add one. Um, note that's like in the harmony that doesn't change that's like always yeah. in your chord progression if yeah. you just put that somewhere and keep it going and then the rest goes around that it starts to float yeah. it like the whole the whole song suddenly gets like a body because there's one one is a constant okay. and then the rest goes around it and it feels so much fuller but it's just one literally one note that you add yeah. and this is what that, what we did with uh, extraordinary for example that's the, the horn that you hear mm-hmm. i mean maybe you didn't even notice it's a horn but it's a french horn that's like yeah. okay. i think it's a high b but i'm not sure uh, what what it is exactly but it's like, anyway it's like one note that's going like and it doesn't stop like until we hit the chorus and then it goes like and when it starts moving suddenly you realize it was there all the time and then it's like moving and you're like oh yeah and and those kind of things like you you don't it's not on the foreground so you so it doesn't steal the attention but it adds it adds something like it adds. It, yeah, um, you, yeah, you, you're, you're, you're not you conscious. It. It's, your subconscious is going on. It's like um, when you put ba- a bass guitar, you can put like subwoofer frequencies that you can't actually hear. You can feel them going on. You can feel the vibration. You can yeah. feel that. And that's the same thing. You, you can't hear that it's going on, but you can sort of feel that it's going on. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, you just, yeah. yeah. And I, I really like to do those kind of things, like, to, to make it more dreamy or just to give you give that extra thing. Yeah. That extra sparkle. I mean, we've been talking about the EP as well, as well as the uh, as well as the song, um, because the EP is also quite new. It's only been out a couple of weeks, I think. Yeah, um, seventh. Oh, uh, sorry, the twenty seventh of uh, November. Oh <laughs> that yeah, was, so that was the Dutch girl in me who wanted to say the seventh and twentieth. Uh, twenty <laughs> seventh of November. Uh, yeah, seventh of November. Yeah. And, uh, and how's that going? It's going pretty well. We're, I'm, I'm really surprised. Well, 
actually I'm surprised by the whole process that we've been through because like we we released our debut single in, in April this year so then the yeah. lockdown was like going on and it just didn't stop and we were like okay is this the right timing like should we should we postpone the EP like are we are we wasting it you know but we did it and I think it's a good thing because a lot of people um, I mean we cannot perform live which is a shame but online everyone is loving it and like um, we have a lot of uh, local radio play already and on Spotify a lot of people are listening to it we're almost on like 100,000 streams so um, yeah it's going pretty well yeah yeah, I'm 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 surprised by it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's well, it's, it's a good song, and it's the, you know, it's uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's also very well produced, uh, so I'm not surprised it's gonna it'll do well. I think. So we've come to the part of the show where I'm going to ask you to uh, talk about. Uh, oh, I can see you getting nervous. <laughs> Uh, talk about <laughs> um, where we can find uh, Marble Waves on the internet. Uh, shout out to, of, to the band and merchandise promotion. Yes. Um, well, yeah, yeah, you can find us everywhere. We're of course we're on Spotify and Deezer and iTunes and Apple Music um, and YouTube. Um, everywhere we are Marble Waves, and. Yep. Um, yeah, we have an Instagram account. We're pretty, uh, we're, we, yeah, we post a lot there. <laughs> so um, that's Marble Waves Music. And we're also on Facebook. We post a little bit less there, but that's a Marble Waves official. And, uh, well, I personally also am on Instagram, uh, Evelyn Armina. So, um yeah, that's and uh, and we have a website where we sell our merchandise. We have really cool socks, and we have our EP on the CD, of course. And soon we'll also have it on vinyl. And um, yeah, that's oh, it. cool. Yeah. So what I will do is I will put all of the links to all of those things in the show notes, so you don't have to remember anything. Cool. Or you can you can rewind it and listen again, but. We'll put all of those in the show notes, so you can just click on the link and go and buy some cool, cool Marble Wave socks. Yes. I've seen them on Instagram. Have They're you? really, really cool. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm pretty sure they were your socks that I saw on Instagram, but they're that, that really cool. They're, they're, yeah, yeah. I, I love that. That's our merchandise. We sell socks. How cool yeah. is that? And it's useful, yeah, it's, you know. <laughs> yeah, especially now with everybody sitting inside in the winter time, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Get some marble wave socks. Yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, are there any other exciting things uh, coming up? Because there are no gigs at the moment uh, in the no, Netherlands. No, it's uh, it's come to that point where yeah, where even we cannot play anymore because like uh, at first in the lockdown. Well, we had like this uh, intelligent lockdown thing going yeah. on in, in Holland. So like um, the big, big shows were, you know, all canceled, but you could play for a pretty long time. You could play for maximum 30 people and mm -hmm. a lot of, a lot of small venues um, booked us because we have like intimate music and, you know, it's, it's actually, it, pretty nice if you're not with too much people so it still yeah. works then so we actually played a lot at first in the in the, like the corona time oh, yeah. um but yeah but now it's come to the point that even yeah like everything is cancelled so even we yeah. cannot play anymore and we have some stuff coming up that hopefully we can do again in the next year but yeah it's waiting for that and then well something that's really exciting but i cannot tell you too much about it but um, I think you, all the people in Holland should like um, keep an eye on Etil Fear because something special is coming about Marble Waves, but I am not allowed to tell you yet. Oh, cool. But it's soon, so yeah, it's like soon. maybe you should just, you know, um, look at my Instagram because as soon as I'm allowed to talk about it, I will... Oh, I will okay. scream so this, it. <laughs> you will scream. So, Evelina Armina. That's yeah. the, that's or, or also Marble Waves. Oh, both. Yeah. Both. Both. So, go follow Marble Waves and Evelina Armina now. 
and yes. uh, something we'll very out. very exciting is coming but very, i very cannot news. tell you okay. yet i wish i could <laughs> well um uh, i'm curious i'm really curious but uh anyway whatever it is i wish you a lot of luck thank you <laughs> Um, so the last thing I'm going to ask you is, what is your new favorite song or your favorite new song? What are you listening to right now that everybody should be raving about? Oh my, I did not think about this. Um, let me think about this. I should be sensible about this. Um, no, no, you don't have to be sensible. Just say the first thing that comes off the top of your head. <laughs> the first thing that you wanted something that's not like not known at all right i am i am a really big fan of uh my head on your shoulder by himanshu i don't even know how to pronounce his name but it's an amazing song i've 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 heard it in like a playlist that we were in and i was checking out like okay what kind of other music do people like uh -huh. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then I checked out the artist and it had like, he had like 50 fans or something. Like, like yeah, he didn't yeah. have any listeners. I was like, how in the world? This song is amazing. <laughs> so go check out Your Head on My Shoulder by Himanshu. I don't even know. Maybe you can link it. <laughs> <laughs> link it I'll, later. I'll find but it's, I'll it's, find it. I really I'll find loved it. it. Yeah. Your Head on My Shoulder. Yeah, it's amazing. And um, yeah, and maybe my my friends from sunken falls they are a really cool band as well that should get more love go check out elysian fields they're really good elysian, elysian fields, fields. Is, their, is their song one of their songs and i love it and the artist was called sunken falls sunken falls they're I very dear oh really they're dear friends of mine they're really probably on a playlist that i know really about good. yeah I'm on lots of playlists. I, I follow lots of playlists. I follow lots of people. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. You know people now. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, I know them, but they don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> they should. That's they all, will. That's, that's, the, that's the eternal problem. The eternal life of an artist. Uh? True. No, yeah, following more people that get followed than you're followed by. Okay. So on that note, I will say thank you very much, Evelina, for joining me this evening. Thank and you wish you all, you know, been well, uh, brilliant guest. Um, <laughs> and we will keep our fingers crossed for whatever happens on RTL Fear. <laughs> Everybody in the Netherlands, go to Evelina Armina, follow her web, uh, her Instagram, and see what happens on uh, RTL Fear. And the only thing I would say is thank you very much and uh, lots of luck. Thank you. <laughs>hope you enjoyed this podcast and that you come away with an appreciation of the creative process and more importantly have found your new favorite song all of the songs featured in the show are on our spotify playlist the enron's new favorites and you can find all the links mentioned in the podcast in the show notes below so that wraps it up for this corona year we'll be back on the 4th of january with a slightly different format the show will still go out weekly, but we'll alternate between the interviews and reviews of new music from today's best, as yet undiscovered, independent artists. Just hit the subscribe button to get the episode when it comes out, and please share the podcast with others who enjoy discovering great new music. Finally, we'd just like to wish you and your loved ones a peaceful Christmas time and a hopeful new year. Stay kind and stay safe. Thanks for listening, and see you next time. Yeah.